All right, 7.2 properties of parallelograms. Now remember, the key word term here in parallelograms is parallel, all right? So opposite sides are parallel. So first one is opposite sides theorem. So if we have parallel lines, opposite sides are equal. And then also opposite angles theorem, opposite angles of a parallelogram are also equal. So applying this, we have an angle here. The angle directly opposite is over here. So therefore, y is 65. It's the same number. Now, sides. We know this side has to be equal to this side if they are parallel. And we know they're parallel because of these triangle symbols. So that means x plus 4 is equal to 12. The only thing we do here is minus 4, x is 8. Simple enough. Okay, we've talked about this already before. Consecutive angles theorem. So if we have consecutive angles, remember, these two are going to be equal to each other, and those two are going to be equal to each other. These two are going to be supplementary. They add up to 180. These two are supplementary. These two are supplementary. These two are supplementary. Consecutive angles just means if you were walking around the track, what's the next one you would hit? Y. If I walk this way, what's the next one I want to hit? X. If I keep walking, what's the next one I want to hit? Y. And back to X again. So consecutive just means the next one. So they add up to 180. Now a new thing we have not talked about yet this year is diagonals in a parallelogram have a special relationship. They bisect each other. Remember, this means we, they cut each other in half. Or two equal pieces are congruent. Okay? So, when these two bisect, those two are equal and those two are equal. Let's see about applying those. As shown, part of the extending arm of a lamp is a parallelogram. Okay. The angles of the parallelogram change as the lamp is raised and lowered. Find the measure of BCD when ADC is 110. So BCD, I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. Okay. And I want to say this is D. This is C, this is B, and this is A. Okay? So, it says find the measure of B, C, D. That's this angle right here. When A, D, C, this angle right here, is 110. Well, you can tell if I'm walking along, the next angle I hit is right there. Therefore, they are consecutive angles. So, 110 plus X equals 180. Subtract 110. X equals 70. 70 degrees. Which, oh, that was 65. I can't remember that sounded familiar, but 70, 110, 70, 110. That might have been back from lesson one. Uh, that sounded familiar. So that's how it works. And again, if this was 70, that means this is 70, and this would be 110. Pretty simple. All right, write a two-column proof. Given that A, B, C, D, and G, D, E, F are parallelograms. Okay? So, as I like to do, write A, B, C, D over G, D, E, F. to Match them up. It says prove that B and F are congruent. Okay? We're trying to prove that this one and this one are congruent. So first off, we're given that there are parallelograms. So we just write given there. Now, we know that CDA, CDA right here, is congruent to B. And that EDG, which is right here, is congruent to F. All right. Well, that's one of the new things we just learned. Okay. So that was 
The con nope. That was in the first lesson, sorry. Technically, we don't need the actual theorem, so we're just going to say we know that that is because opposite, and we can abbreviate, angles of a parallelogram So I use the parallel symbol and then O-gram. Parallelogram are congruent. Very simple way to abbreviate this. All right. Now we know CDA and EDG are congruent to each other. And we know that because vertical angles are congruent. Now looking back at number two, if we know this is equal to this and this is equal to this and we just said that these two are equal then by the transitive property we know B and F are equal all right it's kind of like the if you're friends with person two and person two is friends with person three I'm going to be friends with person three most likely transitive property all right some graphing I haven't done this in a while Find the coordinates of the intersection of the diagonals L, M, and O with the vertices L at 1, 4, 7, 4, so we have L, M, 6, 0, and 0, 0. Find the intersection, the coordinates of the intersection, where they come. Well, remember, we said that these two diagonals will intersect, and they will make that equal, those two equal, and those two equal. Well, if those are bisected, that means this point right here is the midpoint. Okay, that's the midpoint of each of the lines. So technically, I can pick the midpoint of MO or LN. I'm going to do both just to show you, but you don't have to do both. Okay, so L and N. So I'm going to do, remember, X plus X divided by 2 and Y plus Y divided by 2. So LN. 1, 4, and 6, 0. Oh. So that's going to be 1 plus 6 divided by 2, comma, 4 plus 0 divided by 2. So 6 plus 1 is 7. 7 divided by 2 is 3 and a half. 4 plus 0 divided by 2 is 2. 3 and a half, 2. Okay? So that's for LN. I'm just going to do it again for MN. Sorry, MO. Right? So that'd be 7 plus 0 divided by 2, and 4 plus 0 divided by 2. You can tell it's going to be the same thing, 3.5 comma 2. So that is, and if you look at 1, 2, 3, right in the middle, 3.5, up 2, 3.5, 2 makes sense. All right, three vertices of W, X, Y, Z, R. Negative 1, negative 3. So left 1, down 1, 2, 3. X and negative 3, 2. So left 1, 2, 3, up 2. Z, 4, negative 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, sorry. Right 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And down 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay. So we have W, X, and Z. We're trying to find y. So if I draw this, okay, if this is a parallelogram, then they have opposite slopes are the same. So I need to find the slope of xw. So the slope of xw. Now, if I didn't have a graph, then I would have to do y minus y over x minus x, but I can simply count, all right? 
So I'm going to go count down one, two, three, four, five, left two, down five, I'm sorry, right two, my bad, down five, right two, right? Which is the same thing as up five, left two, okay? It's just negative slope. And then for WZ, all right? Again, I could count, I could do the y minus y over x minus x, but I just have to count. So for y, I'm gonna go down one and write one, two, three, four, five. Down one, down one, and write five, which again is the same thing as up one, left five, doesn't matter. So I'm going to follow the same slope, right? So from X, I'm going to go down one and write five. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm just going to check, is this going to be down five, right two? One, two, three, four, five, one, two. Yes, it is. So here is Y. And the coordinates of y are 1, 2, comma, 1. All right? So remember, it's based on the idea that opposite lines of a parallelogram have the same slope. And again, it's a lot easier when they're graphed because you just have to count. Otherwise, we'd have to do the y minus y over x minus x. And that's it.